okay my dear students today we are going to discuss about molecular basis of inheritance before studying this we must discuss about biomolecules and the types of biomolecules okay see here <clears throat> we know that atoms combine together and form molecules okay and some molecules combine together and form the living organisms and the molecules which make the living organisms are known as bio molecules bio molecules okay we know that we have already studied about bio molecules in first qc see here <clears throat> the molecules which make the living organism are known as bio molecules okay in first qc you will learn that when animal tissue or plant tissue is grinded is grinded with a trichloroacetic acid see here this is called what this is the filter paper this is called what this is filter paper filter paper when animal tissue or plant tissue is grinded with trichloroacetic acid then we obtain a slurry this is called what slurry when this slurry is filtered across the filter paper we obtain two components the molecules which are small in size and soluble in trichloroacetic acid they are collected in the beaker and the molecules the components which are larger in size and insoluble in trichloroacetic acid they remain in the filter paper and this is known as retentate retentate and this is known as filtrate filtrate when this retentate and filtrate are subjected to chemical analysis then we found that this filtrate is containing some micromolecules some bio micromolecules and in retentate it is containing some macro bio molecules now in this way based on the size bio molecules are classified into two types okay what are those micro bio molecules micro bio molecules micro bio molecules and second one is macro bio molecules macro bio molecules getting my point okay what are the important micro bio molecules which are collected in the beaker which are found in the filtrate they are amino acids amino acids and monosaccharides 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 and nucleotides nucleotides these are the micro bio molecules which are found in the filtrate and the major macro bio molecules found in the retentate are proteins proteins and second one is polysaccharides polysaccharides and third one is nucleic acids nucleic acids these are the macro bio molecules found in the retentate part okay we know that many amino acids combine together with the help of a peptide bond and they finally form proteins and many monosaccharides combine together and they form a polysaccharides and nucleotides combine together and they form a nucleic acid okay already 
you learned about this concept that means many nucleotides combine together with the help of a phosphodiester bond and form a polynucleotide chain thus polynucleotide chain is known as nucleic acids my dear students in molecular basis of n atoms we are going to discuss about nucleic acids now my question is what is the meaning of nucleic acid and what it contains that we are going to study in detail in the chapter molecular basis of inheritance okay no doubt okay my dear students before the study of nucleic acids let us try to recall genetics in the previous chapter you learned about genetics in genetics what you have learned gregor mendel stated that proposed that the characters of living organisms were controlled by a pair of factors getting my point a pair of factors are responsible to carry the parental characters from one generation to another generation a pair of factors are responsible to carry the parental characters to their offspring that means the character of any organism were controlled by a pair of factors but mendel did not give any idea about the composition of factors that's why later uh, many biochemists start studying what is the composition of those factors that we are going to study in this concept in this topic okay see so here you just recall <coughs> mendel proposed that mendel mendel proposed that mendel proposed that characters characters of living organisms living organisms characters of living organisms were controlled by were controlled by were controlled by a pair of factors a pair of factors getting my point a pair of factors but mendel did not give mendel mendel did not give did not give any idea any idea about about the about the composition of composition of about the composition of factors getting my point mendel proposed that every character of an organism were controlled by factors and this factors are responsible to carry the parent characters to the offspring but he did not give any idea about the composition of factors that's why many biochemists started work on the composition of factors and one more thing you must remember my dear students factors are nothing but factors are nothing but factors are nothing but genes okay factors are nothing but genes factors are known as genes okay and one more thing you should remember <clears throat> now our concept is in molecular biology we are going to study what is the composition of genes what is the composition of factors what are the components present inside the genes present inside the factors that we are going to study in this unit okay now let us study what is the composition of genes see here 
a biochemist his name is friedrich mischer friedrich mischer friedrich mischer a biochemist friedrich mischer was first was first to isolate to isolate factors factors or genes friedrich mischer was first to isolate factors or genes in the nucleus of in the nucleus of pus cells pus cells and named them as and named them as named them as nuclein getting my point see here friedrich mischer it is the name of the biochemist who was first isolate the factors or genes in the nucleus of persons and named them as nuclein why he named them as nuclein because these factors are found inside the nucleus of persons that's why he called the factors genes as nucleins nucleins getting my point nuclear means nucleus in means inside the nucleus since the factors are found inside the nucleus of persons they are named as he gave the name that is nucleins later one more biochemist his name is altman altman one more biochemist his name is altman studied these nucleins and he found that phosphoric acid that is h3po4 is associated with the nucleins because of that phosphoric acid these nucleins are acidic in nature that's why he coined the term nucleic acids altman coined altman coined the term the term nucleic acids getting my point why he named the nucleins as nucleic acids because inside the nucleins phosphoric acid is found which is acidic due to the presence of phosphoric acid the nucleins are having acidic nature that's why altman coined the term nucleic acids to the nucleins in this way factors are nothing but genes genes are nothing but nucleins nucleins are nothing but nucleic acids factors genes nucleins nucleic acids all are same just difference is mendel said them as factors friedrich mischer called them as nucleins and altman called them as nucleic acids different biochemists are giving different names to the same unit okay what's the point and this is very important for your ct and neat now let us study what you mean by nucleic acids all that i told you what is the definition of nucleic acid nucleic acid what is the definition of nucleic acid see here polynucleotide chain it is a it is a polynucleotide chain getting my point what do you mean by nucleic acids it is a polynucleotide chain okay or what do you mean by polynucleotide chain polynucleotide chain is nothing but nucleic acid and nucleic acids are responsible to carry the parental characters from one generation to another generation from their parents to offspring now let us study what is nucleic acid what it contains and how would it carry the parental characters to the offspring getting my point note down okay my dear students now let us continue we know that nucleic acids are made up of many nucleotides getting my point what do you mean by nucleotide tell me. we know that nucleic acids are made up of number of nucleotides that's why we define as polynucleotide chain is nothing but nucleic acid 
nucleic acids are nothing but polynucleotide chain that means nucleic acids are made up of number of nucleotides now my question is what is the meaning of nucleotide let me to explain in this way <coughs> nucleic acids are made up of nucleic acids are made up of nucleic acids are made up of three components three components getting my point nucleic acids are made up of three components observe very carefully what are those first one is pentose sugar pentose sugar and second one is phosphoric acid phosphoric acid that is H3PO4 and third one is nitrogenous bases nitrogenous bases in this way nucleic acids are made up of three components they are pentose sugar phosphoric acid nitrogenous bases now let us study one by one first one is pentose sugar pentose sugar what do you mean by pentose sugar okay what do you mean by pentose sugar all do you learnt in the first puc come on recall it okay pentose sugar means it is a five carbon atom containing compound sugar pentose sugar means what five carbon atom containing sugar is known as pentose sugar okay and in pentose sugar there are two types see here first one is that is pentose sugar pentose sugar see here pentose sugar in pentose sugar there are two types what are those first one is ribose sugar ribose sugar second one is deoxy ribose sugar getting my point pentose sugar means what five carbon atom containing sugar is known as pentose sugar there are two types of pentose sugar are found in the nucleic acid they are ribose sugar and deoxy ribose sugar what do you mean by ribose sugar see here here i will write the structural formula of that is see here is o h o h h o h h o h h c h 2 o h this is first carbon atom this is second carbon atom this is third carbon atom this is fourth carbon atom and this is fifth carbon atom five carbon atoms are there its molecular formula is C six sorry, C five, H ten, O five. This is the molecular formula of ribose sugar, and this is the structural formula of ribose sugar. Okay, this is ribose sugar, and what is deoxy ribose sugar? See. Here. H O H H O H H O H H C H two O H first carbon atom, second carbon atom, third carbon atom, fourth carbon atom, fifth carbon atom. Here, what is the difference between ribose sugar and deoxy ribose -ri -ri sugar? See here, here. at the second carbon position one oxygen atom is missing this is the only difference between ribose sugar and deoxy ribose sugar 
See here, here one oxygen atom is missing. Here, one oxygen atom, oxygen atom is missing, is missing at second carbon position. Getting my point? This is the only difference between ribose sugar and deoxyribose sugar. Getting my point? This is the structural formula and this is molecule formula. Its molecule formula is C5H10O4. This is the molecular formula of deoxyribose sugar. In this way, pentose sugar is nothing but it is the 5 carbon atom containing compound, it is the 5 carbon atom containing sugar. There are two types of pentose sugar in nucleic acids, ribose sugar and deoxyribose sugar. This is the structural formula, this is the molecular formula. And what is the difference between ribose sugar and deoxyribose sugar? The only difference is one oxygen atom is missing at the second carbon position. That's all. Getting my point? Not down, clearly. Okay, my dear students, then second component is phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid. Its molecular formula is S3PO4. Getting my point? This phosphoric acid gives acidic nature to the nucleic acids. It gives it gives acidic nature to the to the nucleic acids nucleic acids and one more thing it is found it is found always in ionized state ionized state what is ionized state that is PO4 3 minus and it is represented as P okay this is the symbol of phosphate it is found in the ionized state that is PO4 3 minus and third one is nitrogenous basis third one is nitrogenous basis see here nitrogenous basis nitrogenous basis what do you mean by nitrogenous basis nitrogenous basis is what these are the heterocyclic heterocyclic aromatic rings these are the heterocyclic aromatic rings made up of carbon and nitrogen why the name hetero hetero means what it is containing different types of atoms that is carbon and nitrogen okay why the name cyclic because it is found in the cyclic form it is not in the linear form it is in the cyclic form aromatic means what because it is containing benzene rings that's why nitrogenous bases are nothing but these are the heterocyclic aromatic rings made up of carbon and nitrogen okay this is the definition of nitrogen bases based on the number of rings whether the nitrogen bases are containing single ring or double ring on that base nitrogen bases are classified into two types what are those see here number one purines purines number two pyrimidines pyrimidines if the nitrogen base is containing double rings see here see here these are the benzene rings that's why the name aromatic okay first carbon atom second carbon atom third carbon atom fourth five six seven eight nine okay that is it is double ringed double ringed and contains it contains what 
फोर नाइट्रोजन एटम्स एंड फाइव कार्बन एटम्स फाइव कार्बन एटम्स गेटिंग माई पॉइंट सी आर वन टू थ्री फोर फोर नाइट्रोजन एटम्स एंड रिमेनिंग आर ऑल कार्बन एटम्स गेटिंग माई पॉइंट ओके एंड वन मोर थिंग यू शुड रिमेंबर वन हिंट इज देर here nitrogen is present in the purines nitrogen is present present only at the odd numbers odd numbers except 5 here nitrogen is present at odd numbers except except 5 See, here. except five nitrogen is found at all num all odd numbers of the carbons. Okay, here this point is very important. Nitrogen is present at odd number odd numbers except five. Getting my point? This is the hint. And the best examples for purines are adenine. Best examples for purines purines are adenine. adenine and guanine getting my point these are the examples for purines and let me to talk about pyrimidines pyrimidines are having a single benzene ring single aromatic ring getting my point 1 2 3 4 5 6 here nitrogen nitrogen or no Odd uh, number is one, three, except five. That is nitrogen. Nitrogen. That is, it is single ringed, single ringed structure, and contains, contains what? It contains two nitrogen atoms, atoms, and. Four carbon atoms. Getting my point? Here also, nitrogen is present only at the odd numbers except five. And best examples for pyrimidines are uh, cytosine, cytosine, and uh, uracil, uracil, and uh, thymine, thymine. These are the best examples for pyrimidines. okay getting my point and one more very important thing the side ring found in the purines this side ring is called what imidazole ring imidazole ring what do you mean by imidazole ring the side ring found in the purines this side ring found in the purines is known as imidazole ring getting my point note down okay my dear students i have already told you nucleic acids are made up of nucleotides many nucleotides are joined together and form a polynucleotide chain this is known as nucleic acid this means nucleic acids are made up of number of nucleotides now my question is what nucleotide contains how nucleotide becomes that we are going to study See, here. first I will write each nucleotide found in the nucleic acid is made up of three components. Each nucleotide found in the nucleic acid is made up of three components. What are those? Pentose sugar, phosphoric acid, and nitrogenous bases. Okay. Now let me talk about polynucleotide chain. Polynucleotide chain. What is polynucleotide chain? poly nucleo tied chain what do you mean by poly nucleo tied chain see here <coughs> here i will draw this is called what this is called what this is pentose sugar h o h H O H H O H 
CH to OH. CH to OH. This is called what? Pento sugar. Now, when this pento sugar links with the purine or pyrimidine, see here, it is double ring structure, hence it is a purine base. Here, nitrogenous base links with the pento sugar with the help of a bond. Here, there is a bond okay and this bond is called what this bond is called what this bond is called n glycosidic bond n glycosidic n glycosidic bond getting my point the nitrogen base links with the pento sugar with the help of a bond this bond is called what n glycosidic bond and the combination of nitrogen base and pento sugar forms nucleoside that means what do you mean by nucleoside see here nucleoside means what see here nucleoside means pento sugar pento sugar pento sugar plus nitrogen base when a nitrogen base links with pento sugar with the help of a n glycosidic bond then this unit this unit is called what nucleoside if for this nucleoside if phosphate group is attached phosphate group is attached see here this is called what this is phosphate group getting my point to 43 minus getting my point if a phosphate group is attached to the fifth carbon atom of pento sugar with the help of a bond called phosphoester bond this is called what phosphoester bond here phosphates links with the fifth carbon atom of pento sugar with the help of a bond called phosphoester bond phospho ester bond phospho ester bond then this unit is called what nucleotide see here plus phosphate plus phosphate that means the combination of pento sugar nitrogen base is called what nucleoside if phosphate is attached to the nucleoside at the fifth carbon atom of the pento sugar then this unit is called what nucleotide nucleotide getting my point in this way nucleotide is made up of nitrogen base pento sugar and phosphate group nitrogen base is attached to the pento sugar with the help of a n glycosidic bond and phosphate group is attached to the fifth carbon atom of the pento sugar with the help of a bond called as phosphoester bond getting my point and this unit which is made up of nitrogen base pento sugar and phosphate group this unit is called what nucleotide getting my point nucleotide is a combination of pento sugar nitrogenous base and phosphate group and one more thing you should remember here this is the first carbon atom, this is second carbon atom, this is third, this is fourth, this is fifth. And this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine. And we know that nitrogen is present at the odd numbers except five. Here nitrogen is there, here nitrogen is there, here nitrogen is not, and here nitrogen, here nitrogen. In this way, Whenever nucleotide is formed, the first carbon atom of pento sugar links with the ninth nitrogen atom of purine with the help of a bond called as N glycosidic bond. That is, N glycosidic bond develops between the first carbon atom of the pento sugar with the ninth nitrogen atom of the purine. And one more thing you should remember see here, this is called what? H O H H O H H O H and H 
CH2OH and here phosphate is attached okay with a phosphate ester bond and here I will draw this is called what pyrimidine because it is containing single ring this is first second third fourth fifth sixth here nitrogen is there here nitrogen is there here nitrogen is absent here first carbon atom of pentose sugar links with the first nitrogen atom of pyrimidine and with the help of a bond called an glycosidic bond remember this is also very important if it is purine then it is ninth carbon atom of purine if it is pyrimidine then it is first carbon atom of pyrimidine n glycosidic bond remember this is very important whenever nucleotide is formed the first carbon atom of pentose sugar links with the ninth nitrogen atom of purine with the help of a bond n glycosidic bond and here the first carbon atom of pentose sugar links with the first nitrogen atom of pyrimidine with the help of n glycosidic bond if it is pyrimidine first nitrogen if it is purine ninth nitrogen getting my point for CET they are asking like this okay and one more very important thing see here <coughs> see here this is called what nucleotide one nucleotide I will draw one more nucleotide here see here I will draw one more nucleotide here see here I will draw one more nucleotide here I will draw this is pyrimidine and this is OH and see here CH2 here P is there okay getting my point here this is one more C H 2 O H this is one more nucleotide nitrogen base pentose sugar phosphate group here this is one phosphoester bond this is one more phosphoester bond that is here two times esterification takes place that's why this bond is called what phosphodiester bond this bond is called what phosphodiester bond phospho diester bond that is one nucleotide binds with the another nucleotide with the help of a bond that is called what phospho diester bond now i will consider one more nucleotide see here one more nucleotide now I will draw this is purine getting my point and this is phosphate this is CH2OH getting my point sorry CH2 okay getting my point see here CH2 this is one more phosphate and I will draw phosphate C H2 C R okay this is OH This is O H. See here, we just observe. <coughs> this is one nucleotide, this is another nucleotide, this is third nucleotide, this is fourth nucleotide. Keep it in mind, this nucleotide connects this one with the help of a bond called as phosphodiester bond. 
and this nucleotide connect to this nucleotide with the help of a phosphodiester bond and this one is connected to this one with the help of a phosphodiester bond in this way with the help of phosphodiester bond all nucleotides combine together and form a polynucleotide chain this polynucleotide chain is called what nucleic acid getting my point here in this way whenever nucleic acid chain is formed that is a polynucleotide chain is formed it is having 5 dash end with the phosphate group 3 dash end with the OH group so here this is one carbon second carbon third carbon okay that means this is the polynucleotide chain this chain is having 5 dash end with phosphate group 3 dash end with OH group okay if the pentose sugar found in the nucleot polynuclear chain is a deoxyribose see here if the pentose sugar in this polynuclear chain is a deoxyribose then this polynucleotide chain is called what deoxyribonucleic acid dna if the pentose sugar found in the polynucleotide chain is ribose then such type of nucleic acid is called what rna ribonucleic acid in this way nucleic acids are classified into two types dna rna in dna the pentose sugar is deoxyribose in rna the pentose sugar is ribose in this way based on the what type of sugar is found whether it is ribose or deoxyribose on that base nucleic acids are classified into two types they are dna and rna that is nucleic acids are classified into nucleic acids are classified into two types they are dna and rna in dna ribose sugar in dna pentose sugar is deoxyribose deoxyribose in rna the pentose sugar is ribose ribose sugar in this way based on what type of pentose sugar is found in the polynucleotide chain nucleic acids are classified into two types dna rna dna means deoxyribonucleic acid rna means ribonucleic acid getting my point in this way nucleo nucleic acids are made up of nucleotides many nucleotides combine together with the help of a phosphodiester bond okay and form a polynucleotide chain this polynucleotide chain is called what nucleic acids if in a polynucleotide chain the pentose sugar is deoxyribose then that type of nucleic acid is called what dna deoxyribonucleic acid if the polynucleotide chain is containing the pentose sugar that is ribose sugar if the polynucleotide chain is containing ribose sugar then that type of uh, polynucleotide chain that is nucleic acid is called as ribonucleic acid in this way based on what type of pentose sugar whether it is containing deoxyribose or ribose sugar on that base nucleic acids are classified into two types they are dna and rna this is the polynucleotide chain here the sugar is here the pentose sugar is deoxyribose that's why this polynucleotide chain is called what dna if i make it oh then this sugar is called what ribose sugar then this type of polynucleotide chain is called what rna here if i remove this it becomes dna okay this is a dna this is about nucleic acids now let us study dna and rna in detail okay not done.